I think there is a fear in a lot of people to explore darkness, but there is a danger in not going there. I have done a lot of a lot of paintings that still have those fairy tale elements in them, but that they're not dark. But that's because there may be like the, the end of a story rather than the beginning of it. Almost every narrative I've tapped into, the beginning has been very dark and it's kind of like finds its way into some kind of conclusion. Sometimes it takes like decades and decades to go from the confusion and darkness to something that makes sense. So that's why I'm exploring. No, I'm almost never obvious and clear because I don't want it to be based on what I think. I was born and grew up in Plovdiv in Bulgaria during the communist regime, during the Cold War. But I, I don't think I was as brainwashed as other people were during that time, partially because of my uh, father, who taught me very, uh, a very early age to question um, authorities and question conventional truths and <laughs> called me the little Bukowski because I would sit down and I would like perfect my argument when I was like four, three, three, four years old. I got into one of those um, amazing schools that existed at that time. Art was taught in the same way as it would be taught during Renaissance time. Like instead of uh, talking about or verbalizing around art and what it means and being, you know, talk about being conceptual and all that, they would literally just like shove a 14 year old into the morgue and you know, ask you to draw muscles. They, they never me meant to, to raise creative people. They meant, never meant to educate an artist. They meant to educate an art soldier that would serve the communist regime. I became a mother quite early. So I was a single mom um, when I was quite young. And uh, I moved to California and I realized that I had something that other people didn't have. But then what I had no clue about was the culture. I think everyone who's grown up in that kind of environment, they come to, um, to like much more open society and they literally just go, oh my God, you, you, it's a clash. And what I found in, in, in Sweden and UK and the United States and that Western culture, the bits that were missing, uh, they, you know, there was something that was making me uncomfortable and I couldn't figure out for like decades. But the bit that was missing was this mentality that is like a musketeer, all for one, one for all mentality. When I was growing up, we were told that women could do the same things that men do. That's why the Soviets sent a woman astronaut right away. And then I came here and it was none of that. And that clash, I think those two worlds colliding kind of made me. There was this badly run zoo my mom used to take me to. And and whenever there was like football on, there would be no caretakers around. The animals would be starting to behave almost like in a natural way. They'll be feeding each other. And I used to, to watch that and, and kind of feel the same way being a, being a girl. A lot of my paintings uh, discuss girlhood. I've always been fascinated with this outspoken nature of nudity because people can't really hide or lie when they're naked. And there is this fragility that I really like. And if you could... Um, put a lot of strength into that, that makes an interesting visual. If you can find the conflicts in it. One of the, the big bits in being an artist, I think, is finding that unique thing that makes it, you know, your art. Also, I think one really important thing is to keep it, uh, like to keep exploring things. And it comes a time in everyone, every artist's career where you are tempted, very tempted to choose like a, a, a specific visual style and just keep at it because I mean that's a, a lot of time galleries and people that you work with otherwise will push you to do that because oh this, this thing it sold really well. I try to stay away from that temptation. I never want to make that choice and I do that by containing those things that I explore into series. That's why I call them series. So they're like small bodies of work where I settle for one specific thing that I want to explore. It could be a motif, it could be a visual language. They all have things in common, but they are different. They're definitely different. You have two components to art. You have skill and philosophy. Uh, and every time I look at art, if any of those bits are missing, um, it doesn't do it for me. I think people have different reasons for making art. Everyone goes through hard, you know, does hard time. Uh, my grandmother used to say that if people carried around like plastic transparent bags with their lives in it, 
nobody would want to <laughs> swap. 